So, when I was a child, the macaws were thick here. They were flying everywhere. And then, they started to disappear. Every day during the breeding season of the scarlet macaw, the people of Mabita prepare to patrol the thick pine forests of the Honduran mosquitia. In 2014, we were able to document that every nest in this core conservation area of Mabita was poached. Nothing escaped the illegal wildlife trade. It was very disheartening. Poaching is the number one threat to the scarlet macaw, largely driven by a domestic and international pet trade. It's estimated only 1,500 scarlet macaws are left in Central America. About 500 of them live in this one region of Honduras. In Honduras, most of the chicks go to Bay Island. For the tourists and hotels, loves parrots, loves macaws, and they use as attraction. But I think they don't know, or they don't want to know, the damage that they are causing in the wild. In the 1980s, Honduras exported some 12,000 birds per year, mostly parrots and macaws, to the U.S. pet trade. Honduras declared the activity illegal in 1990, but it's estimated that hundreds of scarlet macaw chicks are still taken from the mosquitia every year through a network of poachers, middlemen, and international traffickers. We had people for the last two years from China boating up and down the river between Nicaragua and Honduras asking to buy eggs and chicks. So these birds are being trafficked to Asia and probably India and Arabia as well, because you will see these species of birds in pet stores there. The Apupani Project, which means scarlet macaw and mosquito, started with the small village of Mabita in 2010. I was somewhat startled to hear the, the people here saying, we don't see our parrots anymore, and we would be interested in seeing if we can protect them. Thanks to funders like the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, it's the largest community-patrolled parrot conservation area in Latin America. The patrols have significantly reduced poaching. The patrols that began in Mabita are now taking place in six different communities throughout the Mosquitia. We, we banned them because, one, we can tell one chick from the other, and two, if the poachers take them, we know there are birds and where they came from. So any birds that in this area, anywhere in the world that have a band on their right side with our number, there are birds and they should come back. I feel sad because when the chicks are taken, the parents are flying around, flying around as if they were crying. It's like if you lost your children, you would be sad. It's the same for them. And that's a reason I feel sad too. We're trying to work with other communities around Mabita to teach them how to take care of and conserve the macaw. Because if we work together, we can help the macaws to survive. We want to send a message to the world to help us conserve the macaws. It's honorable work, but it's also dangerous. The men and women who patrol these woods must also confront poachers. I was in the river taking a bath, and suddenly, I don't know how many of them, 
people behind the bushes started shooting at me. Thank God I survived. And after that, I felt that I loved the macaws more because I was fighting for them. I feel that this love is for them. For decades, poaching scarlet macaw chicks was the primary way people here made a living. I used to be a poacher. I would climb the trees and take out the chicks. There's no opportunity for us, and that's the reason why we used to be poachers. Today, the Apupani project provides a better way. Team members receive a salary of about $8 a day versus $20 to $60 for one poached bird. They can provide for their families by helping the macaws instead of selling them. With projects like this, we can help the poachers to be conservationists. Project members have established the Rescue and Liberation Center of Mabita for birds confiscated from poachers and traffickers. Here, they care for the macaws until they can be released back in the wild. Before I started working with the macaws, my life was really different. I decided to work for the macaws. I've never earned any income. And so I benefit, and so do the birds. I can really see that the future of the birds is tied into the well-being of the people here. That as the project goes forward, it will help the birds as well as the people. I have a vision for the project here and the macaws here. We just have to keep going forward. We have to leave something for our children. Wari la wisa ma